Hi, my name's Safe. I'm a first year medical student at the University of Sunderland and in this video I'm going to explain how I got into medical school without a single A star at GCSE and not even a single A at A level. And in the end of the video we'll go through other alternative ways that you could get into medicine. So starting off the journey with my GCSEs, I didn't go to the best of high schools and no one was really motivated to do really well. We just sort of thought we have to get into sixth form and that's all I really aimed for. Once I got into sixth form I was pretty much just surrounded with people with straight A's and A stars. Which at the time I remember thinking you only really need B's to get here so did these people work more harder than they needed to. So when I signed up for the sixth form I chose the A levels Biology, Chemistry, English Combined and Law. And in my AS results I got an A in Biology, a B in Chemistry, a B in English and a C in Law and then I dropped Law. And in our first year of sixth form the teachers used to hold like medicine specific events and Oxbridge events but they were very exclusive to people with a string of A's and A stars. So naturally I wasn't allowed to turn up to these. With that in mind and also because I was conscious that I might not get predicted the grades, medicine wasn't really on my mind. Before AS results day, I didn't really think I'd get good enough grades to be predicted three years or above. So I did not sit the UCAT, the BMAT or any sort of relevant test for medicine. And I didn't really think there was a point of doing so with my GCSEs. And I hadn't really considered foundation courses or transfer programmes. But then again, some of them can be more competitive than getting into medicine itself. And of course, the UCAS deadline for medicine and dentistry is on the 15th of October. So I think I would have missed that deadline anyway. But when it came to predicted grades, I managed to get predicted AAB initially but then I managed to convince the teachers to get it up to AAA. But again, that was beyond the UCAS deadline for medicine and dentistry. So what I decided to do is apply for a course in biochemistry because I really enjoyed biology and chemistry. So I thought it'd be the best option to look down that route. And I applied for biochemistry at Lancaster, St Andrews, Durham and Leeds. I think I was putting a false sense of security as well because I did really well in my year 13 mocks. I got high A in chemistry and biology and also in English, I was just off an A. So on A level results day, I found out that I got an A in my EPQ and B's in Biology, Chemistry and in English and that I hadn't got into St Andrews which was my firm choice but instead I got into Lancaster as my, which was my insurance choice but the awkward part of that was that I had to look into the college system that I wasn't familiar with at all and, and I also wasn't really expecting to be studying at Lancaster but I was also comforted by the fact that I had friends from my sixth form studying at Lancaster so now I thought there's no need to really work very hard because I can probably maintain these grades which was wrong. And with that in mind and realising that the entry requirements for my biochemistry courses were lower than that, I wasn't really too fussed about working very hard, which then resulted in me getting three Bs at A-level, which meant that I didn't get into St Andrews but into Lancaster instead, which is my insurance. I remember being on the fence about Lancaster because although I liked its course because it had a lot of chemistry and a lot of biology, whereas most courses kind of just had biology, but I didn't really like the campus. I think that was because of just previous misconceptions. So in my second year, which was during the height of the pandemic, I decided to go ahead and apply for medicine. I managed to get a few more work experience done, such as working at Lancaster Infirmary. So once I decided I wanted to do medicine and after speaking to my personal tutor, I decided to put an application in and then sit the UCAT. So I had to apply for medicine as a graduate and independently. And it works a bit different to when you do it with your sixth form, because obviously you all get that buzz number or whatever it was called when you apply together. So I did my personal statement, sent it back and forth to my personal tutor and to the career services. And I sat my UCAT having prepped for it all the summer. Though I did find this quite difficult because I was juggling this alongside my dissertation. Once I got back, I was finalising my application. I managed to get my predicted grade, which I think was a first which meant that my application was a bit more competitive for the course. And the universities that I applied for initially were graduate entry medicine in, so I think it was King's College London, Queen Mary in London, Southampton and Birmingham. But the day before the deadline, I tried to investigate into what I thought was the most likely university to get an interview for, so that in this admission cycle, although I wasn't in a good place because I hadn't already sat my degree, I would still get the experience from an MMI from a different university. So I applied for Sunderland, thinking if I got an interview, that'd be preparation for next year. But then when I looked further into the university, I found that they awarded an accommodation scholarship, which meant that you got free accommodation in first year and half price in second year. And I thought with that in mind, and also with the fact that I had the maintenance loan, do part-time jobs alongside my degree, that I could actually fund it. So I went ahead and applied for medicine at Sunderland University. So I didn't actually know about all these scholarships and ways to fund my degree up until after an MMI. I might as well go ahead with this university rather than fall back and then apply once I've got my degree. Before we had our interview though, we had to do a roles and responsibilities form which if you passed you'd get an MMI, which then if you'd passed I think you got an offer. I might be missing a stage but they're the ones I remember off of my head. And from that point it was just getting hold of your vaccines, doing the health declaration forms and getting the forms sorted for your DBS. And it was on the 1st of February that I got the conditional offer to study medicine given that I got a 2-1 at least in my degree. So then I just continued on with my degree, relaxed over summer and started in September. So in terms of alternative methods to get into medicine with low grades, you can go through the foundation route and do a foundation year. These are offered in many medical schools such as King's College in London and Southampton. 
Alternatively, you can go through the graduate entry route, which is what I did, or you could go through a transfer where you do a year such as biomedical sciences and then transfer into medicine. I believe this was something you could do at Newcastle University and at St George's in London. I'm not entirely sure if these are continuing. Another thing you can do is sit medicine abroad, such as doing it in countries within Europe.